are renowned tricksters as are fairies. Yonja. Especially. Would you say that the tricksters are like poltergeists? Well, they can certainly create poltergeist phenomena, uh, but uh, the, the trickster is um, more, uh, it's, it's a deliberate stealth, cleverness, um, desire to upset. A lot of poltergeist phenomena, I think, happens as a result of energy manifestations. They um, sometimes seem to be uh, intelligent factors behind uh, uh, the manifestations. But trickster is um, its more like um, something that deliberately leads you astray. Phil, you were going to say something about the, the young Jin? Yeah, most of the playful stuff you see in the paranormal, um, things that, you know, are, they they seem like, you know, some juvenile is involved and in little trickster things, little tricks being played on you. Most of these are done by young Jin who have a fascination with humans. I mean, um, like I what I say in the book is is that, you know, there are, you know, there are young Jin who are, you know, just like to hang around humans or attracted to humans. They've never seen humans before, so they like to go to human children and appear like as, um, you know, fairy, fairy tale characters or, or things from cartoons um, just to get their attention. And the child starts having what the parents think is an imaginary friend because the djinn usually will disappear. And uh, so one of the things, you know, I talk about is that you know, many of these so-called imaginary child uh, friend cases for children should be reevaluated because there may be something going on there to the child. And even when they grow up, they'll still insist that that imaginary friend was something very real. Now, I almost, you know, we talk about how the, they, they really do resemble so much a demon. And we can summon demons to do our bidding. Now, our... Jin's not that I would recommend that. No, but. I'm not. And I'm, I'm hoping our, listening, our listeners are a little more intelligent than they're going to. They want to know information versus how to do things. But it is possible to summon the jinn, isn't it? Well, it is possible. And you can't draw the jinn. You know, you can't bring them to you. If the jinn appears, they'll, they'll say, you know, they came of their own accord. If you go around in the dark, dark, dark road, and, and flash a high-powered strobe light, sooner or later you're going to attract something. So if you really want to get the gin's attention and you're, good, and you're fooling around with all sorts of crazy types of meditation or maybe even drugs or maybe even, you know, you're doing magical ceremonies, the gin might, might pick it up and be very fascinated as to what the heck is this human doing. But you have to remember that... A jinn's favorite game, especially the ones that interact, the younger jinn, is fool the human. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking for Mr. Spaceman, they just may appear as Mr. Spaceman to you. If, uh, you're, if you're looking for an angel, they may appear like an angel. All of this because some of these younger jinn are playing games, and, and this is what they do. Now, I find it pretty interesting. I was looking back, and I was looking at all the different types of jinn there are. Um, and I, I had a question that it crossed my mind that if you had your choice to pick what gin you had to deal with, which one would it be? Myself? Yeah. Uh, none of them. None? Not at all? Not even the, how do you pronounce it, the marriage? I want a gin, I want a gin like Jeannie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you would. <laughs> she, was a, she was a green gin. <laughs> oh, there was a green gin. But what about the marriage? A little ditzy and everything, a little <laughs> funny, but, you know, limited in power, but... Uh, you know, and, and she was pretty hot too. We have to. We have to. And, and she that. had that pretty pink smoke. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. There was an unusual one. Was it called the Palace? The Vampire? The Vampire? Oh foot, yeah, it, uh, vampirizes you by licking the oh, blood goodness. out through your feet. Oh through your my feet. goodness! Oh my goodness! So that's the ultimate foot fetish right yeah. there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> now, now there are different types of gin too. Different color associations with. Uh, with different power levels or even an age of a gin? Well, this is true. But you have to remember that um, you have to compare it with humans. Gin are not born with, they have the capabilities, but they're not born with the ability. They have to learn the ability. 
And like humans who are born, we learn certain things in our life. And the more we go to school, the more we study things, the more we do things, you know, a certain way, we learn more and more. If you bring a computer set to a child, an eight-year-old child, the child won't know how to build the computer, even though it's interested in computers. If he knows what a computer is, but he can't build a computer. But then all of a sudden an engineer walks through the door, you know, that has, you know, all these school years from all these engineering schools and everything, and he could put the computer together with no problem. The junior like that, unless they learn how to do these miraculous things with the manipulation of, of, of elementary particles and rearrange matter, they have to learn. There's certain codes and certain things that they have to learn to do that, just like us going to school. There are older jinn who don't, you know, don't learn that much because they don't want to because they have free will and they could be very, very old and very, very, you know, old but still have the green gin power level, which would be the same as a child. But then again, you have blue gin who are very old that have gone through all the schooling and, you know, have the ultimate in power. And, um, you know, of course, most of the blue gin will not interact with humans. They consider humans below them. Now, let me ask you, the, the red is considered hostile and aggressive, and the black is considered powerful, but is the black considered a negative, like hostile as well? Well, the black is, uh, the black jinn are, are, are the designation of the kings. And no one knows too much about them. We know that in a, in a Persian tapestry, it shows the king of the jinn, and his, 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 he, he's black. And indicating that perhaps the jinn have one king or many kings, and the designation is black jinn. Now, this was an attempt by er, early Persians, you know, the predate Islam, that um, to assign power to jinn. They knew jinn were all different, that they had all different abilities, all different power levels. And when they tried to um, show people this, they drew jinn in certain colors, indicating this was the most powerful jinn. It, it is colored blue, even though it's skin, even though it doesn't have blue skin. Um, so the designation of power goes from the black king, or probably blue jinn, blue jinn, yellow jinn, and green jinn. Now the red jinn are like renegades. They're like uh, people who, uh, they're like jinn who uh, don't follow any clan, they don't follow any king, they're like terrorists. Their main purpose is the destruction of the human race. In Islam, this group of red jinn are called devils. And how frequent do you encounter those? Probably pretty frequent because they, they know how to access our world. Also, in the red jinn, some of them are very powerful. They used to be blue jinn. And uh, many of them have green jinn under their control, not working with them, but they've enslaved them. Just like, um, you know, certain terrorists will capture people and force them and brainwash them and force them to do certain things. And according to what I understand, they also have certain humans under their control that they have doing their bidding. And we see all this problem, all of these problems in the Middle East right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if Jin is respond the Jin are responsible for it. We think that probably most of our Jin experiences that we're seeing in our paranormal cases uh, are involving the more hostile ones because those are the ones more likely to want to engage with us, especially in, in negative sorts of ways. The the ones who don't care about us or who don't have, bear us any ill will. Uh, they're rarely going to want to interact with us. So we're seeing kind of a skewed side of the fence uh, in terms of our paranormal activity. Um, but it is important not to categorize all the gin as bad or negative just because we are having more of a tendency to see that kind in our paranormal cases. Now, I have people out there that are probably screaming at me for not asking this earlier, but... Uh, you touched upon something being able to detect the jinn, Phil. Can you elaborate that a little bit more? So uh, well, you, the device that yeah. you had mentioned oh. that uh, <laughs> you've designed. What what does it measure exactly? Well, it measures in theory. You got to think about this. And 
Um, first of all, you know, let the viewers know that my my background is in is in chemistry and theoretical physics and particle physics, and um, you know, I teach this course up at MIT. I've been an educator for 30 years. Now, theoretically, and I have to start from ground zero almost because you see. Photon should be the strongest force in the universe, but it's not. It's the weakest of all the forces. And, however, it should be strong enough because the, the, the sun's gravity should rip the Earth apart, but it doesn't. But if you put all of these dimensional states in between us and the sun, all of these 11 dimensions, the gravitons being transparent to the entire universe have to go through all these layers to reach us. So by the time it reaches us, it becomes the weakest force. Now, when these dimensional portals open, in which the jinn come from, I believe, there should be an increase of gravitons because you're removing one of those filters in one small area. As those gravitons come through, now theoretically, gravitons are an elementary particle. They haven't been discovered yet, but they will be very soon. They are very much like photons. They should interact with photons. I mean, they should interact with electrons just like photons do. Now, in the photoelectric effect, Photons actually are absorbed into electrons. The electrons jump to higher conduction bands and re-emit photons at a particular wavelength, which collide with more electrons, and so on and so on, and it produces an electric current. Now, gravitons should react the same way, but the flux of gravitons, in, even, in, even in the opening of a portal, would be considerably less than a flux of photons. So... We, and I calculated the number of gravitons that would be emitted in a, folk, in, a, in a portal opening. Now, these gravitons need a matrix of electrons in order to be absorbed into. A normal matrix like a photoelectric cell does not work. So the solution was to get an alloy of gallium and aluminum and bombard it with high photonic energy, X-rays, in the nucleus, causing the electrons to migrate up into the conduction bands causing a thick matrix of electrons around the nucleus. This results in the two metal alloys becoming transparent. Now what happens, theoretically when gravitons hit this matrix, what's going to happen is the electrons vibrate, they jump up to higher energy levels, they re-emit photons, and they collide with other electrons and in a turn produces an electric current. This electric current can be amplified, it goes through a modified Geiger-Muller tube where it causes a cascading effect of positive and negative particles. They collect onto an anode and a cathode. It produces an electric flow, which goes through the circuitry, which is amplified, and it's picked up on the computer screen as a, uh, a chart and even heard as a sort of like a sound. Um, so the device has been very promising so far. When we've used it, we've also got high amounts of EVP and other paranormal things that happen. Um, and also, um, you have to remember that these portals that open up, some of them could be the size, the width of a nucleus. And, but that's enough to get an electromagnetic wave through for communication. Some portals may open up larger. But the larger the portal, the more of the readings you're going to get. And uh, we've gotten readings before, and um, it, it picked up a EVP long conversations with beings identifying themselves as jinn. Fortunately, I was part of the experiment, and the purpose was not to, 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 to develop a, a, um, a graviton detector, which I wrote a paper on in, in the MIT this is a Journal of Physics and Chemistry, detecting gravitons. Now, the purpose of this was to make transparent metal, which, which was succeeded, but it cost like uh, I think of $15,000 for one square centimeter to make uh, this matrix. So the whole procedure for making this matrix goes into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So we have, I, I was able to obtain two of these detectors and wire them and build a device to make them to work in the computer. It's a long story. But anyway, there's only two of these, um, these matrix detectors available. I mean, you know, so it's impossible to make anymore. So what we have, we're experimenting with now, and it's primarily for our research. But we do have a new book coming out in December called 
interdimensional portals to search for the origin of paranormal phenomena, which is going to have all of this information